94% CD, WYSP. Have to be sexually satisfied before he can become a star. Randy Cochran stars as the dancer, and the movie also features Al Delphus, Teddy Bayer, and Lee Milan. Coming up at the Bijou next week, Young Cadets from Catalina Studios and Perfect Ten. October 7th, Street Smart and Leather Report. October 14th, My Best Buddy and Sailor in the Wild. Stop by Bijou Video Sales this week and take today's features home with you. Sale price is part of Cheap Thrills, our semi-annual store-wide sale. Every one of the over 1,300 titles we carry are sale priced and available in VHS and beta formats. The Bijou. We're more than just a movie theater. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week for your pleasure. We never close. Come on, you don't have to belt out the whole song, just at appropriate spots. <laughs> All right, we'll enjoy the music. That would have been a good place. You're trying. Come on, you guys. This is Tara Janet. That's more like my uh, my hey, normal work. You know, nobody wants to hear you talk. Just belt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, all three of you together. Come on. Everyone. <laughs> Excuse me, man. Throw up. Wow. Boy, guys do belch better than women, don't they? I guess. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That's some tell. <laughs> well, there it is. Yes, thank you. Thank you. My favorite song would suck. It's all of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I, I'm always, I, Chuck, really be true, but not putting Bo down, not putting Fats down, but if I just say this, God goes, I'll be lying. To the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, my God, that I love so much, and I keep your holy Sabbath every Saturday, from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. I must say this, he's my favorite rock artist, and he always has been. And I think that, I've never told the world this, but his rhythm is the only rhythm and I can sing my stuff too. Uh, uh, and, it, and it fits. Uh, if I say anything about Chuck, Chuck is, if Chuck don't go up on the stage, I know it's going to be really tough for me. <laughs> Eight years ago, George Bush and I said to the American people, the time is now, and it still is. Now introducing America's number one leading prophet and regular good guy, Stern, king of the universe and profoundly the one we want. Let's hear it for Stern now. Give a big applause. Big, big round of applause. Silence! Silence, you fool! How dare you play such obscenity in the name of Stern? Stern! King of the universe. Knower of all. Omnipresent, omnificial, omni everywhere. Many have said, who is Stern? Yeah. What right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Silence! Yes, sir. Silence, beggar! Yes, Silence! Many have said, who is Stern? Who is Stern? How dare they even ask that question? 
listen. But I know these simple things out in the audience. I will strike them down. I will attack the unknown attacker. Yes, this is true. Now Stern will say more. To my Lord and my Savior, I have sinned against you, my Lord. How come you may not play in the best of Howard this morning? The best of Howard? Yeah. Why would you want to hear the best of Howard? That's old news. It's old, dirty, mindless, racist, stupid jokes. You want to hear that every day? Can you have a little literacy around here? Well, you know what would be really good to play? What, darling? It's a syndicated show, because a lot of people don't even hear that. That's on early Saturday morning. What is it? The Howard syndicated show? Yeah. You want to hear that? So yeah. you want me to leave now? You want to fly back to L.A. because you have a whim about this pig, Howard Stern? You're here. How huh? can you talk about Howard like that? How can I talk about Howard like that? Yeah, you work for the same station. No, I don't. I'm doing this as a favor to the mayor of Philadelphia, Wilson Good. He said he wouldn't drop anything on me if I took over for Howard. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry you missed Howard, but uh, he is having some soap removed from his uh, mouth. Get your hands off of me. Yeah, right. Unless you intend to arrest me, don't t don't push me, please. I'm I'm sir, I'm I'm sure. I know you will, but don't push me. Take your hands off of me unless you intend to arrest me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, Walter, as you can see... Our first guest tonight spent a few memorable years working in this building and is now the morning man here in New York City at a radio station called WXRK-FM. How did they get K-Rock out of this? I couldn't tell you. Well, we'll find out when he arrives. WXRK. Uh, the only reason uh, his first... Uh, he, oh, the only reason he's our first guest tonight is because he's been moaning on the air all week long about this. Please welcome the controversial but lovable Howard Stern. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah, Robin Williams is a genius. Because he said, good morning, Vietnam. That's a genius for you. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll tell you, it's uh, 12 past 6 o'clock at 92.3. K-Rock, WYSP, and a station in Washington, WJFK, our premier broadcast into Washington, D.C. Back in Washington. Ah, oh, that feels good. Are we on in Washington? I wonder. I wonder if that's all hooked up. I'll tell you what, let me take a break here. Robin Quivers is here. The, uh, good morning. Fred Norris, of course, who was with us uh, way back in Washington. And uh, Jackie Martley, you might not know him, you folks in Washington. And quite frankly, I don't think you want to know him. Maybe it won't be worth getting to know him since he probably won't be here. Forever. That's right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Why bother introducing him to Washington? But Fred, you could say hello to Washington. I Washington. Okay. He used to be Earth Dog Fred, but right. he's dropped that. Now. He's dropped that. He got a girlfriend. <laughs> you guys might not have heard Fred is dating now. Oh, a lot of things have changed since oh, five yeah. years ago. Oh, yeah. Mm. That only changed a couple of months ago, but... Hey, so you haven't missed much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, we're back online. 613-923-K Rock. WYS. You know, I forgot that we were on in Washington until about... Just as, we, just as I You're mentioned kidding. it on the air. No. I came in this morning. I said, we're going to be in Washington today. Yeah, I forgot all about it. I was thinking about it last night, and I, I guess it was just been sleepy or something. It's interesting that you mentioned Robin Williams, too, because uh, I don't know. if Did Scott give you some uh, tape there? Because yeah. uh, Robin has been waking up the astronauts, and we actually have some yeah. of that brilliant brilliant comedy banter too. some yes. of that banter oh yes i'm sure it's right off the top of his head and not oh, too yeah. much thought because he is a genius it's a lot of ad-lib genius <laughs> and he doesn't have to think much five minutes of ad-libbing gets him a, <laughs> you know an oscar nomination <laughs> you know i guess i write all this stuff down that i talk about all right why don't we take a break so we don't fall behind and uh the people in washington don't wig out this morning oh wait we have two live this hour you think i have to break right now that better, huh? Yeah, okay. I'll break right now. We'll be back right after these words. 94 WYSP is your key to winning big. Coming very soon, we'll start giving away over a quarter of a million dollars worth of luxurious imported automobiles. And there are eight. Yes, eight of them. Details are coming soon on 94 WYSP, Philadelphia's classic rock and roll. 
Good morning. It's 6.13. WISP's 90 forecast. Not bad at all. Live from New York, it's the WISP Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Howard Stern. Robert, what is this, a tag on Crazy Eddie? Oh, I don't know. So, you know, the only problem with going into Washington is there's been five years of stuff that happened, and it's like trying to recap for them. So no. I'm just going to skip over yeah. the last five years and hope that the next five are good. They're going to just have to catch up. They're going to have yeah. to, you know, like, just be with us now and try to figure mm-hmm. it all out. Yeah. Sorry. You're going to have to just get with it. Because <laughs> I don't have time. It, like, we went into Philly. We spent a lot of time explaining who we were, and I just figure, well, the hell with that. I yeah, can't. but you people have had a taste of it, right. us at least. Save like you've never saved before, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. today, as Crazy Eddie continues his massive manufacturer's overstock liquidation event. Crazy Eddie will never be undersold because his prices are insane. And by the way, my voice has gotten deeper since I worked five years ago. Yeah, that's why I sound a little different, a lot of the gentlemen. But it's the same Howard Stern. Yeah. No cloning. Here. Yeah, same uh, energy, same uh, energy level, same, same kind of biting uh, wit, but uh, the voice is deeper and has matured somewhat. Yeah, I remember when you were in... Uh, Washington, the first time people used to say that you sounded like Alan, Alan Alda. Alda or Groucho. And I don't anymore. Yeah. No. Because I've grown. <laughs> yeah, I've grown. <laughs> now you sound like Sammy. No. Sammy. <laughs> uh, let me take a call from Washington, get this thing rolling. A lot of uh, a lot of our friends will be calling in today to congratulate us and welcome us into Washington. Yes, it's a very special show. I guess the president will be calling in. And I also thought it was kind of neat that uh, <laughs> five years ago when we went to Washington, or excuse me, like seven years ago when we went to Washington, yeah. that we tried to contact the mayor for a parade, and maybe we'll recreate that today. Okay. Yes, it was six years ago, Howard, that we came to New York. I know you keep saying five, but it was 82. Oh, no kidding. All right. Yeah. Well, Robin, uh, do me a favor. Try to figure out when we started in Washington, the month, the year, and the day. All right. Um... Mm. Uh-uh. I know. You do? <laughs> well, it's a good thing you're on the phone. I was playing on like a half hour bit here. <laughs> I had this whole thing worked out where we'd like work out dates and stuff. All right, go ahead. What is it? No, I lied. I don't know. But uh, I do remember the momentous uh, occasion. I'm trying to remember when we started in Washington. I'm trying to think of the date. Because this might be, believe it or not, this might be some kind of historic Anna, event yeah. because... It was winter, wasn't it? We could be starting in Washington at the same time. At the same time that we had gotten fired from Washington, Fred, you said something about us being fired, or the firing from NBC was last Friday. Last Friday. Yes, that that's an anniversary we usually forget. Yeah. <laughs> this one we don't usually celebrate. And I think the firing in Washington was sometime in June or July. Yeah, it was summer. June or July. Uh, so that means. That means technically we started in uh, at NBC August of eighty two. August of eighty two. Like the last day of August, yeah. Okay, so we left Washington in June and July of eighty two. Took us two months to get out of Washington. That was a long move. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody have the exact dates of when we started in Washington? Is there Oh eh, it doesn't matter, I guess. Well, I started in October, and you'd been there for eight months already. Okay, what's eight 81? months from October? From October 81. So it was like February. Hmm. Yeah. Because I remember it being cold. Where'd you pick Fred up at, Howard? Uh, DuPont uh. Circle? <laughs> <laughs> no, I picked up... <laughs> no, he didn't pick me at up there. I picked up Fred in... Um... <laughs> Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> God but he put, wasn't a Washington boy. I knew there was a reason God placed me in Hartford, Connecticut for my first radio job. It was to meet Fred. Your first disciple. And Fred, yeah, and Fred was a good guy, too, because Fred would hang out with me while I did my show. And he wouldn't lift a finger. He would just watch me. Yeah, he'd just look at <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, right. Much as he does now. Yeah. He never, like, would get up, because he figured, well, he'd just put in his six hours, let me sweat it out. He was tired. Yeah, but <laughs> once in a while, he would go in the other studio and do voices. But Fred that's just, when you look tired. 
<laughs> he thought he'd help you out. Yeah, right. And Fred would just Fred would just sit in the studio on I remember on a cinder block and watch me. There were no chairs, it was just a cinder block. So it was a spacious studio. And he would just sit there and watch and you know, rap to me while I was trying to get my stuff together. It was actually kind of annoying. Uh, oh, you should have told me I would have left. And he doesn't go away. Fred's like Velcro. He just, <laughs> <laughs> just sticks to you. Yeah. But uh crazy glue. Mm. <laughs> and Jackie, how about in honor of Washington? You don't get you know, laugh so much. I mean you can laugh, but don't laugh so much. That's a good idea. You know what I mean? I mean that's you know <laughs> Hmm. Somebody said to me the other day, boy, Jackie's getting out of control back there. It's hard really? to even hear the show. I, you know, because I just tune him out anymore. I used to be aware of it. Now hmm. I just say, I have to go on and do the show regardless right. of what Jackie's doing. <laughs> For it's like Velcro. <laughs> 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 well, of course, the people in Washington might have gotten to know Jackie from his star search appearance. Yeah. So they probably are familiar with his work. <laughs> yes, he probably has followers down there. You know yeah. what a big star he is. So I've collected more people since Washington. And also we have boy Gary. He's um, our boy, yeah. He's our boy. And we're still doing wacky stuff. How bad is that grease man? The, the competition in Washington must be like, must have had like the worst weekend of their lives. The oh, way yeah, I figure it. This was it. not a fun one, I don't know. No. Well, this was a fun weekend for them. I'm sure they went home and they all did a lot of writing and yeah. preparing. They're really going to work on those shows now. I bet you those two fat zookeepers who have no talent uh, over in, over in uh, Washington. The Philadelphia zookeeper actually is better than the one in Washington. Now that's pitiful. Because it's Don Geronimo, who uh -huh. is the chief Don Geronimo, who was a bad nighttime disc jockey when we were there five yeah. years ago and got thrown out of Washington. So now he, I guess he kind of copped a little a couple of elements from me and called himself a morning zoo. And the Grease Man is a guy who used to tell entertaining stories between like seven records. Mm -hmm. But now in honor of us, he thought we were coming a year ago, so he dropped all the music and he started talking, except he has no partners on the air. He just sits there and talks to himself. And yeah. takes phone calls for four hours. Well, Goff has dropped a l enough money on that show. Yeah, He's right. Get him partners. Aren't they, guy? Uh, <laughs> I'll never, uh, Grease Man. You do the show yourself. <laughs> Farting. Did he ever give you one of his Cuban cigars? What's that? Is that uh, a Grease uh, Man thing? No, Goff. Oh, Goff. <laughs> I'll just smack him. Anyway, Howard. This, yeah. This is James from Virginia. I just wanted to welcome you guys back to Washington Radio. Well, thank you. Yeah, good to be back, man. This is uh, quite a day for us. Yeah. It's sort of like I want to tell you everything that's been going on for the past five years, and I realize it's useless. It's just, even if I told you everything, uh, in another hour, a whole new audience would be tuning and say in. What, and they'd say, what happened? Yeah. Hey, I watched you last week on Hollywood Squares. Please. Don't hey, even mention hey, it. Hey, listen, I think you got the hots for Dr. Joyce Brothers. Come on. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, uh, you see, now i got to go through my whole Hollywood Squares explanation for Again, Washington. Yes. Again, Understand something. When I went and taped that, it was a whole different show. They edited everything funny out that I said. Were you aware of that? Well, uh, it looked like I was a real lame-o. Well, you didn't get to seem to be getting called very much. Uh, yeah, and when I did get called, did you notice I had nothing to say? Uh-huh. Well... You seem to be constantly scratching yourself. Have you developed some kind of skin infection over the last <laughs> five years? I think I was scratching myself in... Was I scratching myself? I don't, I don't recall, recall doing that. that. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been one of my nervous away, ticks. Yeah. <laughs> but you sit next to Michael Winslow. Do you see that, Fred? Yeah, pretty much. He's like fluffing your hair in the square and all that. Well, oh, yeah, I know yeah. he plays with his hair, but he doesn't scratch. Because you don't know when the camera's on yet, but I wasn't scratching yeah, when I was on camera. Like 200 people. You shouldn't be scratching yourself. Then. I wasn't nose, scratching myself. Picking your nose on camera. Oh, he did. Anyway. I did not. I rubbed my lip, you jerk. I didn't pick my nose. What a dick. I knew a lot of people would think I was picking my nose. I knew it. Did you see that one move I made where I just went like right, this? Yeah. I mean, it was like a Johnny Carson move. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was picking my nose. You got caught. I got caught. <laughs> no, I really wasn't picking my nose. And I wasn't scratching myself. And the thing is... Oh, wait a minute. There was one time that you <laughs> did, you know, that annoying thing you do that I'm always telling you about when you start to think. Yeah. And you start playing with your, uh... My penis? No. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, Robin. Well, that's usually in the studio. No one can see that. No, you start playing with your... Ch that thing on your chest. My hairs? 
Well, I thought it was, you know, you reached over to one side, you know, and I thought you were playing with your breast, shall I say. Oh, really? <laughs> I must have been really comfortable that day. Yeah. Like I mean, when I, I twirl my nipples? Yeah. But I don't really do that anymore. Well, you did it on TV. I'm going back. What day was that? <laughs> I can't remember. It was in the middle of the week. Hmm. They had to call on you for something, though. And you were sitting there, and all of a sudden, you were inside your jacket again, Ugh. like Napoleon. I said, there he goes. Oh, yeah? Was I doing it? <laughs> well, again, I'm not aware of it, so. <laughs> I meant to tell you about that. Yeah, you did yeah. do one of those, you know, reaching in and playing with you. I was nervous. Jim J. Bullock was over my head. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be nervous, too. <laughs> but, uh, and you had that annoying Michael Winslow on your uh, side. Yeah. Not to mention Dr. Joyce Brothers. What a bunch of lamos. But, that, you know, for the people in Washington... Who did see me on Hollywood Squares? What time is that air, by the way, over there? Oh, uh, let's see. It's on here at ten at night and uh, five thirty p.m. Also, but twice. <laughs> Gee, well, they really got a lot of stuff oh, going man. on in Washington. Gee, what a great way to get people worked up for Washington. See me on a lame old show like that, <laughs> being lame. All I can tell you is, man, I did some fabulous Casey Kasem material about how he's a uh, how it's great that an Arab is off the American Top Forty, and how could they call it the American Top Forty when an Arab was running it? And I did some really cool material on, uh, you know, him hanging rugs all over his house. And then I did some really great material on Mayor Koch, you know, never going out on a date and never dating women and hanging out with an alleged felon, Bess Myers and Grant. I think I like your answer of who, uh, what mammal lays the biggest egg or what animal lays the biggest egg. And you said the Fox Television Network. Yeah, well, you see, Monday was an unedited show. If you saw Monday, I was funny, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, later on in the week, they edited everything out that I said that was funny. At one point, I run over into Dr. Joyce's Square and saw jamming my tongue in her ear. And they took that out, too. Well, I just saw your tongue in Shadow's ear. Cause there were a bunch, yeah, there. right. And they didn't even go close up on that when I was coming on to Shadow. They mm -hmm. couldn't handle that. So, I mean, they're a bunch of dicks. And I called them up on the air and I told them so. And I never will do that show again because all they do is edit out anything funny. My father came over for dinner last night and he goes, I'll tell you why uh, they edited Hollywood Squares. Well, well, why? Well, this, is, this is typical <laughs> my father. And I go, I go. well, I know why. Because uh, they can't stand the controversy. No. Let me tell you why. And then I started going, well, what do you mean? Of course I know why. They just can't. And he goes, no. Let me tell you why. Again, you're wrong. Yeah, like I'm wrong because <laughs> I don't know. And I go, wait a second, Dad. How would you know why they edited Hollywood Squares? You didn't see what I said. <laughs> And well, then he, he ended, what was his theory he ended up saying they don't like anything controversial, but he said it in a different way. That was, you know, that was all. He didn't say anything that wild. <laughs> they don't. Oh, I, oh no, I know what it was. He ended up saying because if you attack someone who was there that day on the Hollywood Squares panel, they would leave it in. But as soon as you start making fun of people who aren't there. Uh, they won't leave that in. I go, Dad. They left the Jimmy Swagger comment in? Yeah, I said, Dad. <laughs> well, it made no sense. <laughs> you know, he, and, and then he sits at the table, and everyone starts laughing at me because I won't let my father talk, and I'm giving <laughs> him the answer. Like, I'm some kind of buffoon. Oh. I'm the one with all the success. My father hasn't done crap in his life. He hasn't oh, done squat. He did all right. Yeah, what did he do? He was a child of the Depression. <laughs> well. Yeah, and, no, I'm a child of the Depression. <laughs> I'm severely depressed from being around him. I mean, all these little, you know, all these little masculinity contests, you know, like uh, where he knows why they edited the Hollywood Squares. I go, Dad, you didn't even see the original taping of Hollywood Squares. How would you know why they, <laughs> why they edited Hollywood Squares? How would you possibly know? Are you wearing your red Hollywood Squares uh, shirt that they? Honey, can you see? I, I'm wearing it today. You are. Hey, I thought are I'd wear it today. Psychic? Yeah. Uh, no. Did you see when I cut the sleeves off it and the uh, neck? Oh, I thought that came like a tank top or something like that. No, no, no. I cut it that way, and they freaked out. They couldn't handle even that. They were like, why would you do this? Why would you cut our sweater? Like, it's some kind of... It's like the, the shroud of... Uh, Turin. Turin. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like a Jesus' face imprinted on it or something. <laughs> See, they pray to that sweater. Well, anyway, I had a quick request here for old time's sake. If you got it around the studio. Which is? I shot Ron Reagan. Yeah, well, we do have it, but we've grown a little since then. And we've done a lot more work in the last five years. And I don't know that you want to hear our greatest hits. I think you want to... Yeah. want to find out what's mm. happening now. We should play all our cool song parodies and stuff for Washington. Yeah. Just get them, just get them acclimated. You want to hear some cool stuff we've been working on in the last five years? Yeah, I'll settle for that. Yeah, I mean, I think that... 
This guy's a little bit condescending, you know. He's like, Ooh, Mr. Droll. Well, this is Washington. Yeah, yeah. this is Washington. There, they think they're happening. Oh yes, we understand, Howard. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> Giants kicked your ass, though. Hey, hey, One hey, point. Hey, hey. <laughs> I was always a Redskins fan anyway. I mean, I was always into the Redskins. Yeah, they have a good team. Yeah, yeah they it's do. a likable team. Let's get Doug Williams back in there. We'll see what happens. It's kind of confusing. We don't know who to be for now that we're on in three cities. <laughs> but we're a lot of we're friends with a lot of the Giants and stuff, so. Yeah, the Washington Redskins never called us when we were in Washington. Yeah, and what was that guy's name, the quarterback for years, who was a real dick? Who was it? Joe Theismann. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We really Mr. love him. Mr. Really Jerkoff, who uh, attacked me in the streets and put me in a headlock. Joe Theismann. Mr. I want to be in radio and broadcasting, so I'm yeah. going to go up against you in the morning. Remember when Joe Theismann was doing a morning radio program and how lame it was? No, I don't remember that one. Uh, that was pretty funny. Well, like so many other people, this man didn't hear it either. Yeah. He wanted to get his training in broadcasting, so he was waking up early in the off-season and doing a morning radio program, and he thought he was going to be number one, but he found out it was a little more difficult. Yeah, you don't just come in and take ratings in radio. Just I think he thought because he was Joe Theismann, people would just automatically tune in and be bored to death with him. Yeah, and and wouldn't mind. Whatever happened to him and Kathy Lee Crosby? Is he still with her? Uh, boom, boom, boom. I have no idea. I have a feeling that that relationship is not d going as well as everyone would really? expect. Back anymore? Yeah, they were supposed to get married. Remember, they were hot to get to the uh, altar. Yeah. And all of a sudden, when he broke that leg or whatever he did, uh, that cooled. Yeah. And I think they're sort of together, but every once in a while, I hear about Kathy Lee being out by herself. You know, I think he should have stuck. Working on her career now. He should have stuck with the woman who loved him, the wife. Uh, no, he had to have her accountant. The accountant called her and uh, yeah. dumped her for him. Yeah, he's a he's a real hero. Let me tell you, a real good role model, real hero of a man. A Joe Theismann. Does he still have that bad restaurant? Uh, Theismann's restaurant. Yeah, there's uh, there's a couple of them now. They've grown. Oh, no. It's like <laughs> a fungus. It's like, it's like cancer. <laughs> They're growing. Are they any good? Actually, I never ate one. I wouldn't even know if it was uh, bad. I've never been in there, no. but uh, if you're a cab driver, it's good for a couple drunks around 2 a.m. I see. A couple of drunks coming, <laughs> <laughs> sauntering out of there, huh? The Joe Theismann restaurant. But, uh... Me, I'm dumping my wife. I'm going after Tawana Brawley. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think she wants to be a model, so it would be like a celebrity uh, get-together. What is she going to model? Duty? Oh. <laughs> is uh, Reverend Al Sharpton going to be your chaperone? Yes, well, he always has to go on her dates, you know. I figure, well, he probably wants to get her first. That's why he's <laughs> hanging around her every minute, holding hands with her, going to high school with her. Who does his hair? <laughs> you know, it was funny because Al didn't uh, have his hair done just before the latest round of press conferences. I was surprised. What was it, Afro style? No, it was just not curly. You know, it wasn't yeah. all bouffanted up. Oh, really? Was yeah, that, it was I mean, was that flat. straight? Yeah, it was straight, but just hanging down. You know, that little flip at the back wasn't there. The duck tail. <laughs> Because I figure he's going after Tawana. Yeah. Cause... I thought he was after her mother for a while, but... I don't see it. <laughs> well, modeling is in the family. Her mother, you know, models mustaches. Ooh. So, uh... <laughs> and she can model duty. Oh, good. What did she have smeared on her? Eat? Eat me or something? E-T-E-Me, I Eat guess. me. Eat me. E-T-E <laughs> me. Ete me. Which is French. Some French rapists got a hold of her. Yeah. French white rapists. <laughs> All right, dude, we got to do some commercials. It was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. yeah. Have a good day. Good now. to be back with you, man. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. I already smell us being number one in Washington, and we've only been on five minutes. <laughs> 636 923 KROG WYSP and WJFK. We'll be back right after this. 